Okay, so hi guys and welcome back to another video. Right, so I just wanted to take the time today to record a video about the real you. Yes, who is the real you? I ask you that. Now, the thing is, is that I've made a video about the real self versus the false self, I believe. I think there were the terminologies, it could have been a different terminology, but essentially I made a video in the past talking about how there is your real self, but then there is your false self. And what this essentially translate to, translates to is this whole concept that Alan Watts would often talk about within his teachings and lectures. He would talk about this real self, false self. However, as he dived into the real self, so this, I guess you could put it the higher self and the lower self, you could say that. So the lower self would be the false self and then the higher self would be the real self, right? So he described it in terms of higher and lower. However, he also suggested that, well, whenever you get to the higher self, well, who is that even? Who is that higher self, right? And this is <laughs> this is what makes his teachings quite profound because what I really enjoyed about him is how he would talk about the <laughs> the watcher. So you are the watcher of your thoughts, for example, right? So suggesting that instead of instead of believing that you are your thoughts, it's to watch them, observe them, be the watcher. But Alan Watts further, further went on to talk about how well the one who is doing the watching, who's watching that one? Who's watching it? So essentially, <laughs> you're the watcher but you're also being watched. And so it's trying to get to that, who is that? What was that? The higher self, the real self? Well, what does that all really mean? I mean, what is? what does it mean to be the real self, the real you? Who is the real you? I mean, my name's Hannah, I'm here, I'm in this reality. I'm Hannah, I'm drinking a cup of tea. Just reminds me of home, you know? And that's another thing, right? Home. Is that the real you? Being home? This is where I'm from? This is where I'm from. So this means that it's connected with who I am, right? I am from Belfast. I was born in Belfast. I was raised in Belfast. And so a lot of my identity is associated with the city of Belfast. Yes. You know? But not even just my physical identity, but also what's going on within me because of DNA, because of ancestry, because of the past, right? All these things that over time comes through your blood, comes through your DNA. And that's a huge thing in astrology when it comes to this crossover between the 12th house and the 1st house because the 12th house is you in your mother's womb, essentially in this darkness, right? You're just sort of floating in the waters of the cosmos. You could also see that darkness as space. I, I think it might have been Philip Miles who referred to it as a pod, like you're in your own pod or something, or a yoke. I, I can't quite remember what he referred to it as, but I still envision that. I envision how whenever you're in your mother's womb, you're just floating around in there in complete, complete darkness. Complete darkness. And you're being fed all of your nutrients through your mother, through this other body. The two of you are so connected. You, you are your mother, isn't you're, you know, you're inside your mother. And whenever I envision that, whenever I focus on that, whenever I bring awareness to that in my mind, I think, wow, how powerful that must be. How powerful that must be to be a pregnant woman and to carry, 
to carry a child or a baby or a fetus or a living organism, whatever, <sighs> to carry that little human being, that little alien, right? A little alien, another space reference there, right? You know, we're seeing, seeing these uh, similarities, these connections. But how amazing that must be to feel such a thing happening inside of your stomach. Let's give it to all the mothers in the world, guys. Whoop, whoop, because you know what? Without your mother, you would not be here. You would not be here. Of course, without your father, you wouldn't be here either. All right, wouldn't be here either. But you gotta give it to your mother, like, carried you in her womb for nine months. It's a long time. Really trying to think about what I, how I would react. I'm really scared of that, actually. However, right back to the point. Just sort of rambling now. The twelfth house is connected with this mother, uh, this being in the womb, rather. Being in the womb, but then as you cross that threshold, that line into light, into existence, into creation, you then pass from that twelfth over to the first, and it's like, whoa, I'm in the world. Like, I have my own perception, I'm seeing everything. Who am I? Who am I? You know, what's going on over here? I'm being told this. Oh, so that's what that is. I know what that is. I know what that's not. I know that that's really, really hot, so I shouldn't touch that. What's going over here? What is this? What's that? Oh, oh, thanks for that information. Yep, just processing all the information coming from the outside world. We're taking all the information in because everything in my reality is information. Everything in your reality is information. Everything, everything. So, that's a lot. It is a lot to come out of the womb and into the world. What a powerful energy that is, right? <sighs> How powerful. But it's what we learn about ourselves along the way, right? The path, the journey towards self-discovery, you know? This first house in astrology self-discovery journey but what does it mean this self what is the real self who is the real self is it that you're an aquarius with a pisces moon and a virgo rising <laughs> is it that you're a sagittarius with a gemini moon and a capricorn rising or is it that you see that your Venus is in Capricorn and your Mars is in Capricorn or your Moon is in Virgo whilst your Uranus and your Jupiter are in Aquarius. Where even with that, even with the cosmos as they are, where you say, this is my real self, this thing, this is who I am. Or does it go beyond astrology, right? I believe it does. <sighs> I believe that astrology, like anything else, is only one piece of the puzzle. But I do still believe that there's so much truth and wisdom and knowledge to be found within astrology because without astrology, I mean, <sighs> without astrology, what? What stars would there be? I mean, Aries is up there. We know it's up there. We've seen, you know, you can see the stars. That's the thing. You can see the stars. Stars, guys. Okay, let's get into stars. Let's talk about stars. <laughs> stars were a map, or rather, they are a map, right? Because if you think about it, right? Let's say, for example, you are stranded in a forest. See if you look up or our ancestors even, if they looked up, they knew which star was where and how to get to that star. They would see this star's over here, so I gotta go east or west or my directions or whatever, not very good. But yes, I would clearly survive, guys. I would clearly survive in that forest scenario. <laughs> but yeah, even imagine if you're in a, in a desert and it's desert and it's night and 
it's very rare, of course, that this may happen to you, but, you know, these things are potentials, I guess. You never say never with these things. But, um, yeah, if you look up, you'll see the stars. And it's those stars that were the maps. The reason why we can get from one place to the next in modern times is, of course, due to roads. It's man-made structures. It's man-made um, uh, signs and labels and destinations. And this is how you go here in maps, right? The man-made map and even the compass, which, of course, man-made these things being created. However, before those things, there were sundials. The sun, right? Everything was to do with the stars and the sun and the moon and the planets and nature. This is how our ancestors, ancestors viewed time, okay? It, that, that, that is powerful. Have you any idea, like, how how amazing that is that that our ancestors were able to know from certain areas what time of the day um the best time of the year for crops to grow you know spring or whatever the the best time of the year um for harvesting so with autumn they they had all this figured out and they used they used nature uh, they used the stars but you know Still, as Alan Watts would talk about, who is this higher self? Who is it? It is, seems to be a timeless, boundless, infinite thing, right? And so how do you define something that's infinite? It's not there. How do you, how does one even begin to fathom how to define it? And that is essentially the powerful thing about the 12th house is, um, it is that infinity. It is the dissolving. It's the transcendence of your quote-unquote fake self uh, to the higher self but at the same time it's also not getting it mistaken where we start to believe as human beings that this higher self means we've sort of we've made it so even though we may look at this as a journey in which we are becoming enlightened and we're connecting with source and being so spiritual um it's also appreciating that the reality that you're already in already within it has so much spiritual essence to it i mean i'm looking up right now at birds flying so yeah when it comes to birds and just nature and where i'm at and how i feel I know that just by sitting here, just by speaking right now to this camera, that I can feel spirit within me now. It doesn't need to be something where I'm continuously having to connect with it, but to understand that it's within me the whole time. And um, yeah, I really just loved Alan Watts' way of looking at the world and perceiving the world, seeing that the physical world and this uh, boundless, eternal world, that they're, they're connected, but they're also separate, right? They're separate, but at the same time, they're blended, they're united. And so whilst I can be connected with spirit, right, now as I speak, I also understand that, well, how does I, how, going further than that, well, what does that really mean? <laughs> what does it really mean to be connected with spirit? What's spirit? What's God? What is eternity anyway? What is it? The human mind will never know. It's that whole game of hide and seek. Right? You think you find it and you're dead. <laughs> you think you got it and you're done. <laughs> Twelfth house. Pisces. Yeah. Anyways, that's just what I want to talk about today. I don't know if any of this made sense, but these are just thoughts that I have and quite honestly, I, yeah, I've been enjoying this learning process. I really love learning. 
And you know what, on that note, if you have anything else you'd like to add, any information or research you guys have done, let me know. Because I like hearing other people's concepts and ideas as to how they perceive this reality, but also what helped them come to that conclusion, you know? So, yeah. I'm always open to learning something new, as you probably have gathered. <laughs> So with that in mind guys, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and I will be back with another video very very soon. Bye!